Two, three, four. Run up your engine! Okay, you're driving down the road and your steering wheel starts wobbling back and forth. In the case of this Chrysler, it's even wobbling back and forth at 25 miles an hour. It's got some kind of real serious front end problem, so let's jack it up. Now since the front end's wobbling, we'll jack up the front end first. We'll just keep jacking it till both wheels are off the ground. Then we'll get a jack stand to make it safe. Now, if you've been following the news, you see Harbor Freight had some jacks that had problems. Not this particular jack, it's steel. And look. This giant notches, super giant steel pin. When they're stuck in there, <laughs> that pin in that steel notch is not going to break and go anywhere. Better to have manual ones like this that you manually move up and down than lock in place versus ratcheting ones that are only going to break. Simpler technology in this case is better. The right front wheel first. We'll do the usual check. No real play this way, no real play that way. Now we'll spin the tire. Now when we spin it, it's pretty round, I don't see any lumps in it, but I notice one thing. This tire says crosswind. And let's go to the other side. What's on this side? Well, it says an Eagle. They are different tires. This is a Goodyear Eagle. This is a crosswind. This is a crosswind. And when we go to the other side, this is also a crosswind. And when I look at this Goodyear Eagle, I can see it's worn past the wear bars. The tire's just flat worn out. Now I'm not a tire guy, so I can't put a tire on. So what I'm gonna do is exactly what you can do. I'm gonna put the front tires in the back, the back tires in the front. So the front will have the back tires that have more tread that are the same type of tire on the front. And then I'll put the front tires in the back where, yeah, you're gonna have a good year on one side and a crosswind on the other. It affects it less. Now, if this fixes the steering wheel shaking problem, I'll just tell the customer, look, I moved your tires around and your back tires Go get some new back tires, those are shocked. But you can test it this way to see if that's gonna fix it. You can easily do it yourself. Now, of course, you wanna do the same test on the left front one. It's not particularly warped and doesn't have any play in it, so the front end's solid. So we're just gonna switch the tires. So I'll get them out of electric impact. Take them off. Now we'll take the other front tire off, we'll compare them. Now, as you can see, fools were working on this car. This car had its front end aligned, but the people were idiots. The right front tire is a different tread pattern, has much less tread than the other side. They're just completely different tires. It's okay if you stick them on the back where it doesn't mean much, but in the front, this can cause all kinds of problems. So we're going to put these on the back and the back on the front. So we'll take this tire off. Then we put this back tire in the front. Then of course we jack up the other end. Take that tire off. Then get the oddball tire that we took off the front that's a different brand. Put it back here. You can see this tire has much better tread on it. Now the alignment place that aligned this thing a couple weeks ago, they're showing to be true idiots. And a lot of people have joined this idiocy. This is a front wheel drive car. The front wheels drive the car. 90% of the stopping power is the front tires. Of course, you don't want a car that has any junky tires, but you want the best ones on the front. And if you find after I put these on and we take it for a road test, the shaking's gone. They actually created the problem by putting the front tires in the back that were better tires and the back tire in the front. I see this all the time and people say, oh, Scotty, you know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, the supposed expert's full of crap in this one. You got a front wheel drive car, you want the best tires on the front. That's that's what pulls the car, that's what stops the car. It's absolute nonsense to say, put the worst ones in the front and the best ones in the back. These idiots, I don't care who they are, scientists, engineers, people called me an idiot because they say, oh, you're doing it wrong, Scotty. You're supposed to put the best ones in the back. Bunch of nonsense. Then we'll put the good tire on this one. No, we'll let it down. And last but not least, we're gonna check the tire pressure. Very important that they're the same. Check this, baby. 33 pounds, that's good. We'll check the other front one. It's got 33 pounds. These gauges are extremely accurate. We'll also check the back ones. 33. And we'll check the last one. 33 pounds, so they're all fine. Now we'll open her up and take it for a spin. Starts right up. And here we go at low speeds. It used to shake. Not shaking at all, let's take it on the highway. So here we go some gas look no shaking this thing isn't shaking anymore 
Not at all. It's perfectly straight. So, aha, guess what happened to this car? Basically, it was worked on by morons that said they aligned the car right. Not only did they put the bad tires in the front and the good tires in the back, but they didn't even notice that now the front had one brand tire with one type of tread that's worn not too bad versus the other tire that was a completely different brand that had a different type of tread on it and was much more worn. Just plain idiots were working on this car before me. And of course, this also proved that I'm right. You don't want your best tires on the back and your worst tires on the front. Just moving the bad tires from the front to the back stopped the front end shaking problem. Now I'm going to advise them to buy two new tires for the back or if they want to be cheap, buy one tire, get rid of the Goodyear tire and buy the same tire brand that's on the other side that has the same tread design. But as I drove it around, I could barely feel any problem in the rear end. It wasn't shaking bad or anything. But for safety, I would switch the tire in the back to at least match the one on the other side so all four tires were the same. So the next time your car steering wheel starts shaking, why not figure it out yourself and save yourself a lot of money discovering what's wrong and not having to pay a mechanic $120 an hour to do stuff that you can easily check yourself. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Billy G99 says, my car was shifting a little bit weird between second and third gear. And I saw that the coolant was really dirty. So I flushed it out and put new coolant in. And now a week later, it's shifting fine. What in God's name has happened here? I can take a very educated guess because I've seen that happen before. If your coolant is really dirty inside, it can actually become like a weak battery acid. It can actually create electrical charges. You might think electric charges in a cooling system. Cooling system is connected, goes through the engine. There's various sensors in the engine. And if it starts to get weird electric charges in the coolant, that can make these sensors go a little gaga. And you might say, well, why is my transmission shifting weird? Automatic transmissions are all computer controlled. So if you got computer sensor problems, they can do weird things to the transmission. But it might not even be that direct. It's a sensor for your engine, for your ignition and fuel system, right? Well, modern cars, the engine and the transmission talk to each other via computer modules. If the engine is not running right, that can affect the way the transmission shifts. So even if it had nothing to do with the problem in the transmission, if the engine isn't running right, then the computer tries to compensate by making the transmission shift differently, and that could have cost it. So you actually fixed it by getting rid of this dirty coolant that was probably creating electrical problems, putting in new fresh coolant that is electrically neutral, that isn't making any electricity and conducting electricity, and that's why it did what it did. Romesh 11 says, I need an honest mechanic. Big fan. I got a Volvo S70 2000, four-cylinder non-turbo with 420,000 miles on it. Wow. I'd love to hear about the car. I was also told my battery cables are corroded and I needed 400 bucks to replace them. You got 400,000 miles out of that thing. Wow, you got your money's worth out of that car. There's no arguing that. The older Volvos were better made. And yes, you have a non-turbo one. The turbos generally blow head gaskets. They never last that long with the turbocharger on. They were really good, well-made cars. You can see that by yours. Now as for the cables, and I, they say something's corroded. You can always cut off the corroded section and splice in a new section and fix it that way and then seal it with that shield material. You can buy it in certain foot lengths, cut it, slide it on, then heat it up with a hair dryer and then it shrink wraps on so nothing corrodes on it. Now, I mean, if this guy's talking about replacing the entire cable assembly and stuff, yeah, they're super expensive. Buying them from Volvo, uh, it will cost you a whole bunch of money, but you can always splice stuff in. You don't have to replace everything. I mean, a big wiring harness on a car, not just the cables, but the big wiring harness has hundreds of wires. And if one section's bad, you don't need to buy the whole thing. You can just replace those sections by rewiring them. Anything can be rewired if somebody takes their time. Philip Dempsey 87 says, I was looking at a car service history and the most recent title registration says loan or lien reported. What does this mean? Should I avoid buying the car? Either took one of those payday loan things and I used the car as collateral. Whoever bought the car, they owed the money to somebody. Like you buy it at a car lot, they have it still theirs. And so they got a lien on the car until you pay it off. Now, if it's got a clean title now, go ahead and buy it. It doesn't matter, have anything to do with this, whether there's something wrong with the car. It just means that somebody owed money at some point in time. You want to find out, is it all paid off? If it's not paid off, of course, don't buy the stupid thing. That would be ridiculous. And I have had customers that didn't know do that in the past. 
cost. They buy a car and then they find out that $10,000 is owed on the car. <laughs> and the guy who sold it to him, he didn't pay that $10,000 off. So you got the car, you're liable for it because you bought the car from him. You also bought the lien from him too. So check to see it, make sure it's paid off. That's the main thing you got to find out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.